Happy Friday evening, and I'm waiting for some of you guys to come on tonight. And I have a lot to share with you, and it's gonna try, I'm gonna try to keep it a short video. Uh, something was on my mind. Uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to do this, and so that's why I'm doing this, and I think it's really important. Uh, we are in the end times, uh, and I'm seeing some of you guys jump on. Hey, Nicole. And uh, I'll just wait for some of you guys to come on. Who's with me Friday night? Hey, William uh, Milligan. Uh, love to see you guys on. Thank you so much for following me and your comments. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have very important things to share. We are in the end times. And uh, God is trying to speak to us to get us ready, his church ready. And uh, these are some things that the pastors aren't teaching us. And some of the teachers that are teaching us are very, very off uh, in their doctrines. And we have to be careful to test everything with God's word. Hey, Ryan, and some of you guys are jumping on now. And um, it is again hot in my house. I don't know how you guys are doing. But I, I got my fan in front of me. I got some of my water left, a little bit of water, and uh, so Andre, hey, uh, Dave, Narden, Toronto, Georgia, Ireland, uh, you guys are from all over the world, Sean, love to see you guys on here Friday night, I'm at home, I don't know about you, but I am at home asking God, what does he want me to do tonight? I'm not going to run out there with the world. I want to be close to his purpose because we are at the end. We are Saskatchewan. Hey, Gina. Hey, Kamel. I'm waiting for you guys to come on. And uh, so we're going to talk about this stuff. You guys know I'm from India, 100% from the Punjab region. I was born there, which is was originally the kingdom of Persia, uh, as in the book of Esther. So I was miraculously delivered from the powers of darkness. God delivered me from Satan's power and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And I want to share the things that I have been through in my life so they can help you. I mean, who isn't going through stuff? Hey, Kamel, who, who isn't going through stuff? Who doesn't need wisdom, God's wisdom in relationships, especially now? I mean, especially in, in uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, husband-wife relationships, uh, friends, the church. Come on. Because we're under a lot of attack. We're at the end. So Satan knows his time is short. So he's coming with double barrels. We are under a lot of warfare. I don't know about you, but I feel a lot of warfare going on not in all my relationships and in my life. Even though I have the peace of God, and I'm and I'm perplexed and I'm d distressed and and I have so much, but the peace of God rules and reigns. Okay, hey Narden, you're a Persian and Assyrian, awesome. So I'm waiting for you guys to come on. We're going to talk about the Jezebel narcissist spirit, and remember, I am not, I am not a pro at this. I'm not a theologian. I'm going to tell you something. What I've been through. Is going to help you guys. It's going to help you guys because our testimony is it helps other people and our transparency. Hey, Cassie helps other people. Hey, Ava, 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 Chrisman. Uh, it helps other people and it helps because people are under demonic attacks and most people don't know what to do. I mean, they don't know how to handle demonic attacks and. I've been saved a long time and I've gone through hell and back, like literally, I have been through hell and back. And I have encountered a lot of demonic stuff in my walk with God that most pastors and churches are unable to help me with. But the Lord, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is able to guide us and to help us to, so that we can be set free. He said, I came to open the prison doors to set the captives free. So there's going to be people, obviously, hey, hey, Brenda, Pauline, hey, um, there's going to be people, obviously, on my post that are going to manifest. They always do when I talk about the Jezebel narcissistic spirit.
they always manifest. When I talk about anything, they manifest. You guys see my comments. I mean, people just, they will cuss me out and they will hate and they don't like it. So I'm waiting for you guys to jump on. Please share this video because I believe it's going to help someone, you guys. I believe it. Hey, Cassie. Hey, Paula. It's going to help someone. A lot of people are under demonic control right now and being oppressed by the enemy in your relationships, okay? This is a relational matter. This is about boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, family, friends, pastors, people in your church. Come on now. These spirits operate through all of them. So, now, I'm going to I'm going to start Please share this video of someone that you knows that you know that needs help. And Lord, I pray for wisdom right now and discernment that you give me the words, that you give me the anointing that I can help people that are in need, that are broken, that are being chased by this narcissistic Jezebel spirit, Lord, that you would rescue them by the power of your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay. This Jezebel, narcissist, this spirit is a demonic spirit. It does not have a female or a male form. It is a demon spirit. It can come in the form of a woman or through a man. Most of us, I, I would think 100% of us have encountered this spirit. Whether it's someone that we were married to, whether it's someone that we dated, whether it's someone in our family, whether it's one of our friends, or, or whether it's in the church, we've all encountered this demon that is operating through people in the end times right now to destroy you. That's the agenda, to steal, kill, and destroy. To steal, kill, and destroy. This spirit has been after me my entire walk. As you know, God has used me around the world to share my testimony, to sing, to speak. And I was caught up in some things in my in some parts of my walk that I shouldn't have been with certain ministries that I was unknowingly part of that Jezebel spirit. So, and in relationships too. So, I'm going to get to it. I want you guys to share Please share this video, please, because I'm going to be very transparent. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, but understand this, that in, in the last days there will, be, there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, little kids younger kids, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people or, or turn away from them, the Bible says. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households. Listen, ladies, and capture weak women. God said weak women women who are burdened with sins and led astray by various passions or lust. Jezebel, who is Jezebel? Jezebel was, she was the daughter of a Phoenician king. This was in, in the Old Testament and 1 Kings 16. God talks about this Jezebel, and this Jezebel, Ahab was the king of Israel, and he married Jezebel. 
Jezebel, when she came to Israel, she bought her foreign gods and goddesses, and especially Baal. And she actually caused the children of Israel and uh, the people in Israel to sin against God. And she did not accept Ahab's God. She did not accept it. She rather, she led Ahab to tolerate Baal. Baal is Satan, basically. Baal is satanic worship. And I'm going to get into this. I want you guys to hear me. So Jezebel led Ahab, Ahab was weak. Ahab was, he had no backbone. He did, he did not, he tolerated Jezebel. He tolerated Baal worship in Israel. They had false gods in Israel because of Jezebel. Jezebel brought so much sin in. So Elijah, Elijah, the prophet of God came and basically, he called out Jezebel. And he said, he called out her sins, just like John the Baptist did and got beheaded for it. But Elijah, he, he triumphed on, Mark, on Mount Carmel. So basically, he challenged all of, of the prophets of Baal, Jezebel's prophets. And fire came down from heaven, and, and Elijah killed all all of the false prophets when Jezebel heard of this news she she heard that the prophets were dead she hunted Elijah's life she came after him please share this video she threatened to slaughter him just like he slaughtered the false prophets of Baal in 1st Kings 19 2 that's who Jezebel is I'm setting this up, you guys, and then I'm going to get right into it. God in the book of Revelation to the church of Thyatira talks to us. And he says, And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and your faith and your service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. This is New Testament, you guys. I just read you Old Testament and Kings. This is New Testament. Please share this video. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. This is serious, you guys. I'm going to break it down for you in a minute. Behold, I will throw her into a sick bed, and, who, and those who commit adultery with her, I will throw into great tribulation unless they repent of their works, and I will strike her children dead. This is God saying this. And the churches will know that I am he who searches the mind and heart, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. I'm going to break this down. Jezebel hates authority. Jezebel, that spirit, hates authority. It goes after anyone in authority, whether it be a spouse, whether it be somebody you're dating, family, friends, church. If you have a voice for the Lord, it's coming after you. This spirit is after the children of the living God. This spirit wants to shut your mouth to the things because you call things out. You are calling, spirit of Jezebel is false doctrine. Again, the Bible says that tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess is, in, is it teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and eat food sacrificed to idols. These are people that are in your lives. Listen, I'm going to start from the beginning. When I got saved, that's when the problem started. That's when Satan said, you know what? I'm coming after you. You are on my hit list. He has his own throne room in the second heavens. He roams around the earth seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says Satan, he's like a roaring lion. He walks about the earth seeking 
whom he may devour. He's looking for the servants of the Most High God. He is after us. And the reason he is after us is because we expose his agenda. So when I first got saved, I came out of the New Age. I came out of false religion. I came out of a family that worshipped other gods. I came out of generational curses. I came out of I came out of everything everything that opposed God. My grandpa would read my palm every time that I'd see him. We had a picture of a guru in a prayer room when we were little growing up in, in our house in, in the religion that I grew up in in India. Actually in America, but from India. And I, when God delivered me, Satan said, you know what? I'm going after her. Just like he's coming after you. Since you... See, he can see things in the spirit that we can't see. We can't see the spirit realm. We don't know what's happening with angels and demons. We can't see angels and demons. Some people, God has given the gift of discerning of spirit, which is one of the gifts of the spirit that God gives as he wills. They can see things in the spirit realm. Like I can see spirits and people. I can see when somebody has a demon spirit in them. I can see it in their countenance and I can see it in their eyes immediately and they manifest. Please share this video. Because we're in the end times, this is becoming more prevalent and it's part of our society that most churches are not teaching. This is, there's more demonic possession and oppression now than ever because Satan's time is short. The word is getting fulfilled. As we see all these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draws nigh. We are in the end and Jesus is coming. And the devil knows the word, but he doesn't have understanding of the word. He knows his time is short. The Bible says during the tribulation, all hell is going to break loose. We are not in the tribulation right now. We are, we are in, pre, in a precursor before the rapture of the church. So God is talking to the church in Thyatira. And he's saying, you tolerate Jezebel. So how do we meet Jezebel? How does Jezebel operate? Okay, we're going to get into it. I'm going to take a drink of water. Please share this video. Lord, I pray that you give me wisdom in Jesus' name. When I got saved, one of the first ways that Jezebel operates is through dating. Through the opposite sex. What does he do? He sends you a man or woman. This man or woman can be... It can be either one. And this person is going to it's going to destroy your life. This person is an assignment from Satan and they don't know it. They are coming to pillage you. But they're coming in covert operation. It's no wonder Satan, Satan sends his ministers as ministers of light or righteousness. Satan comes as an angel of light, so of course he's going to send somebody in Jesus' name to your life. That's how he's not going to come necessarily as an unbeliever. Listen to me, please share this video. He's going to come. He's going to send somebody that comes in Jesus' name to your life. They're going to they're going to act like they're believers. They're going to talk like they're believers. They're going to look like believers. They're going to preach like believers they are going to be in ministry like believers they're going to uh, sing like believers they are going to preach like believers they're going to act like believers and they are sent by Satan himself listen to me you guys you need to share this video what are they gonna do they're gonna lead you astray they're gonna they are coming after the Elijah's okay they're gonna lead you astray. they're gonna they're gonna try to get you not only sucked into false religion and false teaching and false teachers in the Christian world, but they're going to get you into sexual immorality. They're going to try to get you in that bed. What did God say? I want to say, I want to say with the scriptures, you guys, I don't want to lead anybody astray, including myself. What is, what did God say? God said, you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching 
and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sac sacrificed to idols. So it's not just physical fornication, but it's also spiritual fornication. It's spiritual adultery. So they're trying to get you sexually immoral, yoked in with them, so you become one with them and you develop a soul tie. Now that you have that soul tie and you have had sex with this person, they, they seem like they're the most amazing person to you, okay? Even if you don't have sex with them, they will idealize you. They, they will hook you. They will, they will love bomb you. They will treat you like you're the most beautiful, most amazing God, a guy or woman that they have ever met. That you are just so special that they have never felt this way before. That you are the first person that has ever made them feel so good about themselves. And, and remember, this is a demon spirit. So remember, jet, uh, narcissism is from a Greek mythology. Okay, that's what, it, what it's from. It's Greek mythology. We're, we don't believe in that. But, it, but it's derived in the secular term which the secular people use, narcissism. We know it as a Jezebel spirit. The world classifies it as narcissism. But this, this guy, um, he would look into the water and he would see a reflection of himself, not really himself, but a reflection of himself, and he would worship himself and see himself as something that he really wasn't. So this person comes in covert operation sent by Satan into your life, the Je this Jezebel spirit, and they will put you on a pedestal. They will think you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. They will pour all their love on you. They will buy you things. They will say smooth words when there's seven abominations under their lips. The Bible and Proverbs talks about that, these cunning people. They will speak to you in such words that you didn't get when you were growing up from your parents, that they will pour it on you, the very thing that you're missing, that you have missed because you haven't been healed in your spirit. You haven't been healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Satan sends this person into your life and they're like, man, in a short, quick time, you let down your boundaries, you let down your guard, you believe what this person is saying, you've never met anyone like this, and they'll tell you, everything everything that you want to hear i mean in listen in the narcissist mind or the jezebel mind they know that they're deceiving you they're very very well aware of the game that they play they have done this over and over and over again and and the the hard part is when they start idealizing you there's another situation that happens after that okay now you're on cloud nine. Now you have soul ties. A lot of you guys sleep with this person, whether it's a man sleeping with a woman, developing soul ties, whether it's your wife, if, whether you married them, uh, husband and wives. Listen, there's a lot of narcissist husband and wives that are married to each other. Or you're married to a spouse that's a narcissist. Also in family members, the, you, we have family members that are narcissists. The whole dynamic of the family is narcissism which they deal with triangulation or a smear campaign or the silent treatment you are you are the black sheep you are the object of their of their hatred and their evil okay and wife or husband sometimes the wife or the husband is into porn or infidelity or physical um abuse or control this is all about control and manipulation, which is a witchcraft spirit. So, boyfriend and girlfriend too. Friends. Friends too. Have you ever met someone and they're just so into you, like right away, like, oh my gosh, you're so awesome and you're the best thing and I support you and you're so great and you're the, a great person and, and they're calling you all the time and they're love bombing you and they're, they, they send you all kinds of gifts and and you're just like, wow, I don't even know this person. Like, they're a stranger to me and they're already like coming into my life, love bombing me, okay? <laughs> you guys know. Or church, have you ever met a pastor that is totally into himself and doesn't even care about you or your needs? Okay, 
This is in church too. A lot of narcissistic pastors out there where it's all about them. You see people raising their hands. It's like they're raising it at them and worshiping the pastor instead of God. You see it in a lot of mega ministries. You see it in small ministries. You see it in small churches. The size of it doesn't matter. It's the pastor's heart. Is he humble or is he a narcissist? Is it about him or is it about Jesus? And I'm not talking about a false sense of humbleness because there is false humility just as there is godly humility, which is brought on by brokenness, seeing your sins at the foot of the cross and how evil you are as a human and your desperate need of God. If you're not there, guaranteed you're a narcissist. So, the next thing is after they love bomb you, please share this video. Okay? The next thing is the discard, or the disc, well, the discard phase. That's a bad one. So, at the beginning of the relationship, they build you up. Even in family, I mean, you can have family members that, oh man, we haven't talked in so long, you're so amazing. And whatever injury they did to you before, they're going to do to you again. And the moment that you disagree with these people, they will discard you. The moment that you disagree with the spirit, they will discard you. They will turn on you like you have never seen before. You cannot have your own opinion. You cannot have your own belief system. You can't disagree with them. Everything has to be, you have to agree with everything they say. If you don't agree, then you are their enemy. And, make sh and they will make sure that you are their enemy. They will tell everybody. They will tell her, okay, they're going to start discarding you. They're going to start putting you down. They're going to say little things to you that will put you down. Because they, all of those red flags <laughs> that you saw, you recognize and they are found out now. It's like, oh, what do you mean? Oh, you have a wandering eye. Well, what do you mean a wandering eye? Then they'll gaslight you. Oh, remember when you said this? Oh, no, no, I didn't say this. I never said that. And you and you're think you're crazy because you know very well what you said and what happened. But this it can be a uh, shame is saying my, my life story, my family. This is so prevalent. This narcissistic Jezebel spirit is very prevalent in families, especially when you're a Christian, especially when you are talking the things of God. That spirit that's coming at you is from the family, is a, is a Jezebel spirit. That Jezebel spirit is in every member of that family until they get delivered by the power of the blood of Jesus and at the foot of the cross. And they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they repent of their sins. Every person in that family will have the Jezebel spirit. And that spirit is coming after you, ladies and gentlemen. That spirit is going to try to kill you and shut your mouth, just like Jezebel did to the prophet Elijah when Elijah called out all of the, all of the false prophets of Baal. And, and he killed all the false prophets. Jezebel heard word of it, and she was coming after Elijah. Just listen. This spirit is so oppressive and so demonic, it makes you feel like you wish you were dead, like Elijah. Elijah went to hide under a juniper tree. He ran from Jezebel. He wanted to die. He was so oppressed. Okay? Diane says, A woman have Jezebel and all the men are Ahabs in my family. Girl, okay. I can go, I can go on that one. Elijah wanted to die. Please share this video. When you have Jezebel in your family, it can come through your parents your siblings, anybody, and they will come. You will be the evil one in your family because Jesus is in you. Jesus. Jesus has redeemed you from the hand of the enemy, from Satan himself, who is Baal. Okay? Jesus has redeemed you. So Satan is coming after you through your family. He wants to kill you even, even if they... Say they're Christians, but because they pay homage to the Baal worship, it could be the Catholicism, 
the idols of Catholicism, it could be Hinduism, Sikhism like in my family, it could be uh, the New Age, it could be any type of religion that is opposed to the living God, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and because they have not repented of those ties of though of that of that idol worship just like the prophets of Baal rising up idols in Israel and Ahab did nothing about it but Elijah called him out he says he called him out he was like repent and and he killed those prophets he called it out and because you call it out and because you no longer serve those wicked idols your family will come after you. Okay, the next one, you, that's why your family's coming after you. I just want you to know that. God revealed this to me. I have my own family that does that. That's how I know. God shows me this stuff. I'm not alone. You're not alone. Okay, David, uh, all you guys are jumping on. Listen, boyfriend, girlfriend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a story with you. And I'm going to make it short because I'm going down the list. Because right now we're in the discard phase, okay? Because you no longer are giving the Jezebel, a.k.a. narcissist, that that uh, narcissistic supply or, or worshiping them like Jezebel wants to be worshipped. And you are no longer in the bed of fornication. You're, you're exposing the spirit in your life. You, you're like, wait a minute. I met you. You're my boyfriend or girlfriend. And you're, you want me to have sex with you? You want me to go listen to that new age music? You want me to go worship the, the people or listen to the people from new, the new apostolic reformation? If you don't know what that is, look it up. You want me to go uh, deal with, you want, me to have, you want me to get drunk in the spirit? You want me to have gold dust in my life? You want me to, uh, you want me to go travel to heaven and have visitations from angels? Wait a minute, you're, wait, what? You want me to go into spiritual fornication with God himself as the church of Thyatira? She causes my servants to seduce my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols? Listen, I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into the great tribulation until unless they repent of her works. So not only is Jezebel going into the great tribulation, but all y'all that are following her are going into the great tribulation too. So, hey, Shane is saying silent treatment. Yep, I said something about silent treatment, so I'm going to talk about that. But all you guys that are not only the under the idolatry of Jezebel, but also in relationships with Jezebel, you are also coming under judgment. And you don't even know it because this spirit is so covert. It could be a loud Jezebel. It could be a soft Jezebel. It could be this spirit is so demonic. It wants to destroy you. So, okay, I'm going to share a really something really quick. A lot of men that I've dated in my life are Jezebel. And why is that? Why is that so? Is there something wrong with me? Nope. Jezebel goes after impasse. These are people that have been touched by God. These are people that have a sweet spirit that are, that are empathetic that care about people that have a tender heart that are loving that are uh that uh, feel you know weep with those who weep laugh with those who laugh these these spirits go after uh people of god that are very empathetic whether it's pastors whether it's men whether it's women whether it's uh doesn't matter who it is okay so if you have a kind heart and you have the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, goodness, self-control. Listen, this Jezebel is coming after you because they see it as a weakness. Instead of meekness, they think that you're stupid. They think that you will tolerate it and they think that you're weak. So they will come after these men and women in a dating scenario, okay? I don't want you to think that something's wrong with you, but you know what? If you tolerate it, you're going to get injured. You're going to have such injury in your life and you're not going to know what hit you because it happened to me. Oh my gosh, this happened to me up until 2007. 
now when I meet a guy and he's and I see that Jezebel spirit on him done I don't care how I feel I don't care how many muscles he's got I don't care how good looking he is done because that spirit wants to shut my mouth that spirit wants to kill my ministry that spirit wants to kill the Jesus in me I can't tell you countless numbers of men that have come into my life in the name of Jesus whether it's in the ministry whether they're they're out I don't care if they've gone to church with me I don't care if they're in the pulpit they are after me they're hunting me they're hunting <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh but oh Lord Jesus I was a wreck I met this guy I went through my divorce I was I was broken I met this guy through work he came into my life this guy had a Jezebel spirit on him and God would give me dreams and visions of this spirit and I didn't even recognize it I didn't know what it was one night I had a dream and in this dream this a spirit came into my room and it was half man and half beast and I was like what is this and this spirit was trying to possess me and kill me and I didn't understand because I was a fairly a new Christian I didn't know what to do and I had another dream where I was in a room and in this room there was total darkness and I was in this room with the same guy that I just started dating and a light shined on me from heaven in this dream and it was so dark around me and I was quoting scripture like the Son of God I was praising God I was doing everything to get rid of its darkness and oppression but I could not get rid of this darkness and oppression and a light shined on me from heaven in this dream and I heard someone weeping over me I had never heard God weep before never you know how Jesus wept I had never heard God weep before and God wept and I didn't know what he, what, what he was weeping so heavy over me and he told me because I knew in the dream of what things were to come in the next 10 years of my life listen guys ladies and gentlemen God will warn you and even if you don't see an evidence of these things in a person you have to believe that God is talking to you because this spirit is after the person of God this spirit will pillage your life this person tried to pillage my life gaslighting silent treatment walking out on me physical abuse trauma injury in every way please share this video I'm free now but listen to me if you let this narcissistic spirit in, even through your family through through somebody you're dating through a friend if you see somebody love bombing you and starting to discard you listen the discard phase is very very painful because you don't know what you did you don't know what happened and after they discard you guess what they're gonna Hoover they're gonna try to see knocking on that door you know when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness when the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil the Holy Spirit led him for 40 days and 40 nights in the end of it Satan came to him and he, and he kept saying it is written and he kept twisting God's Word and then Jesus who is the Word of God said no it is written and so he would fight back with the devil of the true written Word of God because Satan always twists God's Word so Satan left because he couldn't get Jesus he couldn't get him to sin so he couldn't get him to bow down and worship him or to do anything opposed you know disobeying God his father so the Bible says that he came back for a more opportune time that means Satan's gonna come back to Jesus and say hey I'm gonna come back at another time and see if I'm gonna get you then this is what this Jezebel spirit does it comes back at Hoover's it has a hoovering stage where it will come back and you'll get those texts on your phone and you'll be looking at it say hi babe I miss you that's all you're gonna get or hi babe that's all you're gonna get hi honey that's all you're gonna get they're they're, try, they're trying to see if you're gonna get the bait if you're gonna bite 
That's what they're going to do. And that hoovering stage is because they want narcissistic supply. You see, narcissists have multiple lovers, just like Jezebel. That Jezebel spirit, she she does that spirit in the book of Revelation commits fornication, adultery, <laughs> causes the servants, the servants of God to commit adultery. They have a lot of lovers and idols in their lives. They refuse to repent. And so uh, what happens is that these people that contact you, these narcissists, they leave you, they discard you, they dump you, whatever it is, they discard you like you're nothing, just even your family. Your family will discard you when you no longer are abiding to their control or manipulation or witchcraft to how they want things. Just like this person, just like a friend, they're, you're not abiding to whatever control they want to put you under. So they're going to discard you and then they're going to hoover and they're going to see, hey, they're going to send you letters or maybe a text, you know, hey, have you... Uh, are you going to comply to my demands? And if you don't comply, yeah, Shane, William, yeah, you guys are saying this. Are you going to comply to, to my demands or are you going to be who you are? Because you're messed up. You're the one that's messed up. You are the narcissist. You are the evil one. You are the wrong one. You're the crazy one. Everybody knows how crazy you are because we all know how crazy you are. And they have a smear campaign. So they, they, they call other people or they talk about you. When they talk about you, they can't wait to put you down. They can't wait to tear your name up and your reputation up. And even in their own minds, they actually believe their own lives because they're under the demonic spell of this spirit. They're going to believe everything that you say. Yeah, William, they twist it. And they're going to believe everything you say. You, they're going to believe everything that that Jezebel, that narcissist, aka narcissist, is saying about you, because you are the threat in the spirit realm to the demons that are controlling them. In fact, don't be surprised if they turn on you, because those demons in them, they know. That you are the one that can deliver them because you're exposing the spirit. So your family members and whoever you dated or your wife or your husband or your friends or whoever these people are that are become your enemies, they become your enemies because Satan is lying to them. Satan is the one that knows that you have exposed his agenda and his kingdom. And he, he knows that you have exposed him to the light of Christ. That's why they hate you. They think you're crazy. Satan is speaking to their mind. Do you understand? I want you to think about this. We're going to talk about the Ahab spirit in a minute. But I want you to really think about this. They hate you because Satan hates you. And Satan is inject. Listen, if they could lie about God. Listen. If Satan could lie about God to the whole world and they believe you, is Satan not going to lie to your family about you and they not believe you or believe him about you? They lie about God and the whole world believes Satan about God. Satan accuses God all the time, just like he's accusing you to your family, just like he's accusing you to your ex-boyfriend, your ex-wife, your ex-girlfriend, your husband now, your wife now, or the church even. They're a church People that really believe that you're evil because they're under that Jezebel spirit and, and they're under judgment. God said, I'll give you over, but they're going to enter into the bed of the great tribulation. They're going to go into the great tribulation because not only did this is deep, you guys, this is deep. Not only are they against the thing that God has done in your life, but they're against the spirit, the true spirit of the living God. They're against God in your life. So listen, Ahab, who is Ahab? Ahab is a part of the scheme of Jezebel, whether it's you're, you're married to, there's a lot of Jezebels listening right now that are married to Ahabs. I know a lot of women that control their husbands. <laughs> 
I know some men that used to be so sweet and so nice, and those women that come in the name of Jesus are so controlling their husbands, and they are just witches. They're witches. They're literally like a warlock. They're operating in witchcraft because control is witchcraft, and manipulation is witchcraft. Whether a woman is crying every time she can't get her way, and she's bawling, and she's stomping, and she's sulking, and she's giving him the silent treatment, whatever it is to punish him or withholding sex from her husband, Whatever it is, she is manipulative and she is wicked just to get him to do whatever it is that she wants him to do, even though he knows this is wrong and this is going to destroy the family and this is, going to, this is against God. She refuses to submit to him as unto the Lord and so she causes her husband to have no backbone, to be afraid of her because He's got issues too. He's got mama issues. Let me take a drink of water. He's got mama issues. He probably is all about his mama. Mama this, mama that. Jezebel is daddy this, daddy that. I love my daddy. My daddy does all this stuff for me. The guy is all my mama can, my mama can cook better than you. Listen, this is a whole dynamic. This is a lot of brokenness. Same thing, you guys, with boyfriend and girlfriends. You better get rid of that Jezebel spirit. That woman that lures you into bed of idolatry or sex. You know how many women lure men through their eyes, through their breast, through their legs, through their... I mean, they will lure you into immorality and idolatry. Okay? It's not how you look. Always, of course, there's a certain dress you have to be. Uh, we have to be modest. We have to be godly women and modest. But you can still be beautiful and modest. You can still be glamorous and modest. You can be plain and beautiful and modest. Whatever it is, you can. the beauty shines through Christ in you. Where it's not the thing that we focus on is our outward adornment, ladies, but inwardly, that quiet and gentle spirit that wins over our husbands without any conversation because our conversation is in the fear of the Lord, okay? So we have to make sure that we are not ruling over men, and we also have to make sure that those Jezebels don't come through men because there's a lot of men that have Jezebel spirit. And guys, listen, a lot of you guys are Jezebel's ruling over your wife or your girlfriend. You're pounding her. You're abusing her. You should be in jail, okay? Your butt needs to be in jail, all right? When you got wandering eyes, when you're looking at pornography, when you're on Facebook liking all these young women and you're saying, oh, I love my wife. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're liking their half-naked pictures. I watch you. Why, are you. why are you liking other women's pictures? And your wife is broken. She finds out. You're looking at porn. You got the Jezebel spirit. You got the spirit of manipulation and control. It's a demonic spirit that wears women down. It's the number one cause of divorce in churches is pornography. Listen. This is a demonic spirit. This is prevalent in the end times. So much immorality and idolatry. So much evil. God says, I'm going to send you into the great tribulation. Y'all better listen. I'm going to send you into the great tribulation with the devil, man. You're going to be under so much judgment because you refuse to repent of your idolatry with Jezebel false religion. Why, why are you still Catholic? Why are you still with your idols praying to Mary? Why, why? Why are you still praying to the dead? Why are you, why are pastors not talking about, why are you yoking up with the ecumenism? Catholics and Christians are two different religions. Why are you committing fornic spiritual fornication? Why haven't you not repented of the Buddha that you have in your house? Why are you not repenting of having being friends with somebody you slept with 
the Jezebel. You slept with your soul. Friends with them. You're still hanging with them. Come out. Come on now. William, come out from among them. Be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Then you will become sons and daughters of the Most High God. Why are you still hooking up with the Sikh religion? Why are you still... Why are you still believing in purgatory? Why are you supporting a religion that believes in purgatory? You guys are going to like this. I promise you, I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to help you. I'm here... I'm here because Jesus is speaking through me because pastors are cowards. They don't want to offend anybody. I'm here because I love you, not to look down on you, but to say, listen, if you think Catholics and Christians are the same, you're deceived. You're deceived. Catholic is very cultish. And if you're dating Catholic and you're a Protestant, that is idolatry. You have entered into the, into the judgment of, of spiritual adultery. If you're a Christian, you're dating a Hindu, that's Jezebel's doctrine. That's false teaching, false doctrine. If you are a Christian dating even a Jewish person that's not saved, it's still idolatry. If you're a Christian that's dating any other person that's, a, that's a, not a Christian, you're unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What does light have in common with darkness or Christ with Satan? What? The Bi I'm quoting the Bible. Jesus said it. You are, you are part of that Jezebel spirit. Listen. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. Ladies, it was Eve that was deceived first. These people are coming into your house. You got all this lust on you. You can't keep your legs closed because you're full of lust and idolatry. You don't care about Jesus, but you confess him with your mouth, but your heart is far from him. Ladies, your, your woman, your beauty is to glorify God. You're just as guilty as the men. It's not to have all your body parts hanging out. It's not to have your, your, your clothes up to your crotch. And even if you look pure, you're so ungodly because your heart is so... Listen, I know a lot of women that are not very cute. And they look very modest. And they're wicked as wicked can get. They're wicked all get out wicked. Hear me out. It's a heart condition. It's a heart condition. You're sleeping around. You're married. You're picking up guys online. You're a Jezebel. You hate men. You want to control men. You're a witch. Just like men are warlocks that are operating wizardry and control and manipulation. You're a witch. You want to rule over that man. You want to you want to let him know that you are just like him because you hate men and men sleep around and so you're going to have as many partners as you can because equal rights and feminism and I'm going to be just like the man and I'm going to open my legs and I'm going to um seduce you and I'm going to seduce you with my eyes and 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 with everything that I got. That's who I am and and God sees everything. God said, you are untrustworthy. I would never have a friend like you. Never. I would never bring you around my, my boyfriend or my husband. I'll tell you that. Lord Jesus, he wants to set you free. Because you're coming under judgment. You're going to go into the tribulation. You have, you. it's whoredoms. You go out with a guy and he's going to take you to dinner. And you're going to go to have sex with him. That's. How much you're worth a dinner? That's how much you're worth? Because you hate men, you hate yourself, you have no worth, no self-worth because you can't see yourself as God sees you, you see? You just, payment for dinner is sex, ladies. And men, that's, that's what the women are worth to you. Payment for dinner or drink, sex. 
oral sex, regular sex, intercourse, that's what you're worth. You're worth a payment for dinner. And you come up under these Jezebel spirits, these controlling, manipulative, demonic spirits because you don't realize how much you're worth in God's sight. That anyone that takes you to bed hates you and hates your soul because your soul is going to spend eternity in hell because the Bible says fornicators, adulterers, all those, there's a list, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Galatians, it says, don't be deceived. Don't think you can continue to do what you're doing and go to heaven and come up under this demon spirit, this Jezebel spirit. And Ahab, you know, Ahab, you ladies, you can be an Ahab. You can come up under these demons. You can let your husband do whatever he wants. You can let him look at porn. You can let him le lead you into porn. Or, um, you know, in the church now, they got swingers and they got... Um, Hey, listen, this is so popular right now, swinging in the church. And you ladies, your husband asked you to look at porn and to swing with another couple and, and to do all this filthy, demonic, evil, unclean perversion. And you as an Ahab are following him into, into destruction. And the Bible says, wives, submit yourself unto your husbands as unto the Lord, not as unto Satan, but as unto the Lord. Because when he is rebelling and he's asking you to be a pervert, God doesn't require you to submit to that. He wants you away from that because you are the bride of Christ. You are not just a piece of meat that this guy that you married in a contract wants you to do evil. Listen, I'm, I'm being real. Can we be real in the church? Now, my last thing is family, and I'm done. This also happens in family, you guys. And you guys can't continue to put yourself in harm's way with your family, with your friends, with your spouse, with your, with your boyfriends, girlfriends. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that God delivers you and sets you free. That you can serve him with a clean heart and a full heart because we're at the end, you guys. The rapture is going to happen. It's better to be alone. Okay? Yeah, William, do not use your members. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to be maimed entering to the kingdom of God than to have your whole body cast into hell. Listen, this Jezebel spirit is going to destroy you. If when God shows you the spirit, you better run as fast as you can. You better run for your life because when you have dreams and visions of the spirit and God's trying to warn you, you better run for your life because you have become their new obsession. They're going to destroy you if you don't do their bidding. Just like Jezebel wanted to destroy Elijah. Listen, Elijah wanted to die. That's how powerful this evil principality is. It's a very wicked spirit that is ruling our nation right now. That is ruling the world right now. It's just not, it's in people. They, they're, they are against authority. They will, they will um, do things their way. They don't care what anyone says. They don't care the consequences of their behavior. They're disobedient. They're without natural affection. They're unruly. They are, they are the epitome of Jezebel in the end times. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sweating because it's so hot in my house. So they are the epitome of what we're seeing and the false religion. The unification of all the religions is, is part of the Jezebel, the bed of fornication, the bed of adultery. That spirit's causing you to not only go into spiritual, sexual, unite fornication, but also spiritual, spiritually, you're, you're trying to connect with different religions or a piece of this or a piece of that, or I still want to hold on to this or that. And... And I still want to keep that Buddha in my house, or I still want to keep that statue of Mary in my house, or that rosary, 
or I still want to, you know, have those uh, ohms in my garden, or I still want to have, um, you know, false gods, or I still want to wear that turban. I came out of the Sikh religion, but I still want to wear my turban and not cut my hair. Uh, Hinduism, <clears throat> I still want to practice the yoga, even though it's holy yoga, which is no such thing. It is, it is false religion brought into the churches and we have to repent you guys we have to repent this is wickedness in our culture and we are yoking up with jezebel god said he's going to send you into the great tribulation you've been warned so i'm done now and god bless you remember this spirit is out to hunt you down and you better shut that door and never let it back into your life. That spirit will not be content until you're dead, until you backslide, until you are nothing, because you are the object of its demise. You are the object because you have the anointed one in you, which is Jesus, and that spirit is after Jesus in you and everything that he's done in you. Hey, Tracy. So because you're saved, that spirit's going to target you. It's coming after you. It has already been after you. And it's not going to stop. Because I don't care if people say they're saved. A lot of them have that Jezebel spirit. And they're coming after God's anointed people. Ladies and gentlemen, Please hear me out. We are in the end times. It's Friday night. I hope if you are with anyone with that spirit that you will get deliverance and that you that God will open your eyes to show you that that's not love. People that love you, whether it's your family or your friends or or pastors or church people that have that Jezebel spirit or your boyfriend or girlfriend love love is God God is love you know it's preferring the other person before yourself it's not causing injury to someone it's doing good things to you that love will love never fails and when someone loves you, whether it's your mother or father or sisters or brothers or boyfriend, girlfriend, wife or husband or church folk, they will never, never bring harm to you purposely. Never be out to smear you or to discard you or to love bomb you or to uh, devalue you or to... Um, to put you down and to make you feel like you're nothing and that you're extreme Christian Bible thumper. If they profess to be Christian, they're going to love that Jesus in you. I'm going to try. I'm helping you. They're going to love that you're saved and redeemed from Satan. They're going to love that you're not going to hell. They're going to love that God has done a miracle in your life. They're going to celebrate with you. They're going to protect you because love protects. They're going to rejoice with you. They're going to weep with you. They're going to guard you. They're going to lay down their life for you. You see, please share this video. It's not love to discard you because of your stand for Jesus if they're Christians. It's not love for your family or your friends or your church or your boyfriend or girlfriend to say that you're not worth it because of your stand for Jesus and for them to just discard you, okay? It is demonic. It is evil to the core. And they think you're crazy. It is not normal, you guys. Listen, that spirit wants you to think you're crazy when in fact they are crazy. And then they curse you in Jesus' name. I've had a wom woman, women, men, curse me in Jesus' name. Put curses on my life because of the stands that I take. They curse me. They're witches and warlocks. They come in Jesus' name. They're self-deceived and deceiving others. 
they pray to a Jesus, an unknown God in their mind. They don't know this Jesus because Jesus is amazing. Like he is awesome, you guys. He's like love, man. He's like, he is so pure. He's so amazing. He's gentle and lowly in heart. He's like, he heals. He, he sets. He sets the captives free and heals the brokenhearted. And he rejoices with you when you say no to sin. And he hates evil. And he's angry with the wicked every day. But in a righteous way, he, he he's coming with judgment. And we're trying to warn you. I'm trying to warn you. And some of you guys hate me even for warning you. So if they hate you, remember they hated him first. But they're going to hate you because they hated Jesus. So rejoice, because great is your reward in heaven. And stay away from these people. Listen, if they go to hell, you can't fix it, even if you love them. I can't fix my family. I can't fix my friends. I can't fix my exes. I can't fix anybody. I can't even fix myself. Only Jesus can fix me, because he's the one that made me. So we have to let go of the control and the anxiety of what's happening. We have to say, Lord, I laid at the foot of the cross. And this is hard to do. We have to do it this daily because we don't have control. We can't fall under that controlling spirit like we're the Savior and have a Savior complex. We can't rescue people. Jesus came to seek and save those that are lost. We can just pray for people. We can't save them from hell. We can't fix them. We can't rescue them. All we can do is plant seeds of the gospel of Jesus Christ and God sends some to water, but he's the one that causes the increase. And they have a free will. They don't have to get saved. They can reject Jesus. I know many people in church that confess Jesus, but they're on they're from hell itself. They're from hell itself. They're wicked. I remember I met this guy He's in church. He's married now. I remember he used to gaslight me. And I, the last time I dated him, he put his fist in my face like this. Inches from my face because he called me out of my name. And I don't want to date him anymore because I learned. God delivered me. You get called that B word, that A word. I don't care what you get called. You're done. You're done. That's it. That's, that's Jezebel. You're done. They're going to see how much they can beat you down for control. You're done. So I remember he punched it in my face. And I remember I called the police because he wouldn't get out of my house. I called the cops on him and he, he had a smear campaign about me because I didn't tolerate his abuse and putting me down. I became the victim of a smear campaign and I became the victim of that I'm crazy. And I know he's in church, he's in the choir, he does stuff in his church and he's married. I know he's abusing his wife. Do you understand? God shows us things that Jezebel is out to kill you. He wanted to disfigure my face. God says your face is next. But God gave me enough strength that no matter how you feel about someone, you've got to get rid of them. You can't put your trust in feelings. You've got to use your head. You've got to use your brain. we got Christians. we got people that don't use their brain. you got to quit feeling so much. You can't trust your feelings. Use your brain. A man that cusses you out or a woman that cusses you out or hits you, any woman or man that hits you or pushes you around and is abusive, you're going to marry him? You're going to get more. Satan is out to kill you. That's what he's going to do. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. But those are Jezebel spirits. They do the smear campaign. They will make you out to be crazy. They're out to destroy your credibility and your ministry. Because God is using you. God is touching lives through you. Whether it's a pastor, whether your minister is evangelist, I don't care who you are out there. I don't care if you're none of them and you just minister to people in your family or your friends or you're just sitting at home under quarantine. God is still using you somehow. I know he is. 
because he'll use you right where we're at. But Satan is out to kill us. And you got to stop these demon spirits in your life. You got to stop this Jezebel. You can't be Ahab anymore. You got to stop. Listen, Jehu the prophet finally told the eunuchs to throw her out of the window. So they threw her out of the window. He dealt with Jezebel. He was not afraid. Jehu the prophet, man, he just came, showed up, told the eunuchs, throw her out of that window. They threw her out of that window and the dogs licked her, her blood. Listen. She died a horrible death. I love you guys. God bless you. I pray this video helped you and I'll talk to you guys soon. The girl that I did this for, I hope this really helped you. God has a purpose. Even if you're not there, you will get there. And that Jezebel, that demon is after you to stop you because your testimony is going to affect people's lives. Your life may not be where it's supposed to be right now, but it can get there. But God can use you in mighty ways. We're at the end. We don't have enough time. You better run because the days are evil. You better hurry. You, you better run the race quickly. You better cast off every weight and every sin that so easily besets you. You better run that race. Jesus is coming. And there's no time to play around with witches and warlocks and Jezebels and AKA narcissists. Okay? Get rid of them out of your life. Stay away. Stay away from such turn away. Ladies. Repent. Men, repent. 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 God bless you. I love you all. I love you all. Talk to you guys soon. Pray this really bless you. If it did, will you please tell me? Please tell me. And if you're on YouTube, I'm posting this on YouTube, please subscribe to me on YouTube. Please tell me if this has helped you a lot. God bless you.